Hello everyone, my name is Karibro, and this is the wrap-up, the last one of The Wolf Among Us. We're just gonna check out the, uh, Fable Town. Uh, sorry, the Book of Fables final entries that we've got here. Vivian's story, The Girl with the Ribbon. Vivian was the very first to bear the curse of the Purple Ribbon. Removing the ribbon would result in death, and any attempt to talk about it was thwarted by the spell upon it. As time went on, she tried to live a normal life. Eventually, she married a nice man, but he was constantly wondering about the ribbon around her neck. Despite her pleas for him to leave it alone, one night while she was sleeping, he attempted to remove it. As he pulled on the edge of the string, Vivian woke and saw what her husband was doing. In a panic, she pulled away, preventing the ribbon knot from being undone. Furious, she tried to express the severity of his actions, but her husband was unable to understand. She realized then that she couldn't trust him and decided to leave. She lived alone for the rest of her days in the homelands, preferring the safety of isolation to the risk of another betrayal. The Pudding and Pie, Vivian and Georgie's Place Vivian and Georgie met during the exodus from the homelands, and they helped each other survive the long journey to the mundane world. Upon their arrival, however, they found it hard to make a decent living. With what little money they had, they opened the pudding and pie. Operating a strip club may not have been the most desirable occupation, but they figured it was better to be in charge of a place like this than be forced through desperation to work at one. <sighs> the Big Bad Wolf. Big B's true form is that of a giant eight foot tall wolf. In addition to his iconic huff and puff power, he has also inherited other abilities from his father, the North Wind. For example, Bigby is able to hold his breath for an abnormally long amount of time, making it impossible for him to drown. Hmm. Mary's loyalty, part of the job. Bloody Mary began working for the Crooked Man many centuries ago. He promised her freedom to do as she pleased as long as she agreed to be his personal bodyguard and hitman. Because of the Crooked Man's power and influence, Mary never had to worry about getting caught by the authorities. She enjoys her job immensely and would defend the Crooked Man to the death, mostly because she finds it fun. Fable Town Justice when a criminal is captured in Fable Town, the traditional procedure is to hold a formal hearing in front of the community or concerned parties. However, exceptions are often made to expedite the process. In reality, there aren't any hard and fast rules for these types of situations, and the extent to which which and the extent to which policies are upheld can depend on who is being charged. A new order: Snow White in charge. With Crane out of the picture, Mayor Cole has officially appointed Snow White as the Director of Operations and Deputy Mayor in his absence. So where is this Mayor Cole? He's been absent for the entire time, and then he appoints Snow White while he's still absent? Many would say this promotion is a long time coming, since she was instrumental in the establishment of Fable Town and personally ensured that many Fables made it to the New World safely. She's also been doing the work of Deputy Mayor unofficially for years. Sheriff Bigby After fleeing the homelands, Bigby Wolf spent many years wandering through Europe. With a fable colony quickly developing in the New World, Snow White and Feathertop tracked down the wolf and offered him passage to Fable Town. He agreed, and Snow cut him with a lycanthropy-stained knife to give him the power to change into human form at will. Bigby became Sheriff of Fable Town under King Cole's administration, but because of his violent past, many Fables didn't trust him and he was banned from ever setting foot on the farm. Ha! To this day, he struggles to redeem himself in the eyes of the community. Sounds like some of the community think I'm doing a good job. Some of them are terrified of me because of my little incident at the well. I'm so tempted to go back and do something different, but I'm not going to. I'm going to see things different through other people's playthroughs, but I want to leave mine as it is. So that's the entire book of fables. And this is just a tally overall of what we did. Hmm. Hmm. 
So it looks like I played mostly on the typical good guy side of things. But there were some times when I dipped down to the dark side. See, we decided not to send Toad to the farm, and he went anyways. Man. I'm wondering if there was actually a way to do that. Oh, did you give the Crooked Man a trial? Brought the Crooked Man back alive. I might play that part of the game again just to see what happens if I don't. I won't record it because I want mine again to stand on its own. But, that's, that's all she wrote. See you guys in the next video. Ta-ta.